So, uh, this presentation is going to present proxy SQL, that is uh, high performance and high visibility proxy for the sequence. Uh, before explaining what is what proxy SQL is, I want to explain uh, why I started developing it. And I have, I'm working from HPPA for many years, and while doing SQL review, I normally part, categorize the performance issue in three types. Uh, the one that can be solved by VDA, and this means configuring MySQL properly or adding some sort of index. And then uh, the one that needs to be solved by developers, that you know, needs to be right the queries or, or caching some results set, and other uh, that need cooperation between VDA and developers. The main problem uh, that I tried to solve was uh, that money, most, most of the time developers don't have the time or the resource to rewrite queries or to cache uh, some results. So I want to move the task from a developer to a VA. So uh, one of the reasons uh, for having this proxy is to rewrite the queries. The reason is that many applications write very, uh, very, very broad queries, like queries that pull a lot of data from the database, or that do not use the proper index, or even worse, some queries that work perfectly good on a storage engine, but then they don't work the same way on a different storage engine, because another storage engine uh, does not use the same index. Uh, so, um, when you ask a developer to reply to those query, most of the time they can't, or they, they are not the owner of the source code, or the query are generated by some or an app. Uh, having those sort of query cause uh, load or latency, and sometimes it might also cause sit out, site outage, and recovery from this sort of scenario is very time consuming. And another problem is caching frequent queries. Uh, one of the problems uh, I found while doing SQL review most of the time is that there are applications that are asking the database the same question over and over, sometimes even for static data. Uh, a very simple example, there are some applications that are querying the database for having the list of countries in the world. Well, the list of countries, they, they don't change overnight, so they should be on the same, and you should be able to catch them. Uh, querying the database all the time for this sort of information that should be cached inside the application or externally from the database, it, of course, it generates unnecessary latency that if you remove them, you improve performance of your application. So trying to identify uh, how to implement this, I was looking for what which proxy are available for MySQL. And uh, right now there are two proxies widely used for, for MySQL. One is MySQL proxy, and the other one is HA proxy. Both of them have advantages and disadvantages. The main advantage of uh, MySQL proxy is that it is customizable and you can extend this functionality in Lua script. So it, uh, this works as a router and you can uh, add extra functionality. I thought one of the disadvantages of using MySQL proxy is that it's very secure intensive and it's, it's not really reliable. It is alpha release from many years and it's very easy to crash MySQL, MySQL proxy, so it's not something that you want to put in production. The other proxy that is available is HA proxy. Um, HA proxy is not used only for MySQL, but it's a, very, it's a proxy especially for HTTP. So it is very stable, high performance, and very mature. Although, uh, because it is a proxy only for HTTP, uh, for all the other services, only a layer for proxy. This means that it's not able to understand the MySQL protocol. So it's only forward uh, all the queries from the client to, to the application. So um, it's possible to use one of those two queries to perform a script write and caching. Well, yes, actually it's possible. You can use MySQL proxy. Uh, you can write some Lua script to rewrite the queries. There are actually. And, or you can also use some Lua script to cache uh, queries, the result set on on the Mac, on the PC. Although the problem with MySQL proxy, as I said previously, is that it's not very stable. So uh, I don't think this is something that should be done. So this is why I start developing ProxySQL. ProxySQL is a proxy that sits between the application 
and the database system and try to solve several problems. The problems are uh, on the fact provides a query, so when the query are being skewed, they are being rewritten. Cache reads outside the database. It does load balancing, query booting, and read by script, and it also provides high reliability. I'm going to explain uh, how this is possible with using a proxy script. Before explaining how proxy SQL works, it's important to understand in which setup you need to uh, set up proxy SQL and how proxy SQL uh, see the environment in which it's working. Uh, first of all, um, proxy SQL groups all the, back, all the MySQL backends in what uh, it's called the host group. So all the MySQL server are grouped in host group and each host group has a specific functionality. It's very easy to understand this with an example. So this is the first example. You can have a host group where you have all the bright masters and then the host group where you have all the read slaves. And this is quite common uh, setup and you're just implementing a read write split. So all the, all the insert statement and other DMS statement goes on host group one while all the select goes to host group, sorry, all the DMS segment goes on host group zero while the select segment goes on host group one. Although with proxy SQL you can have way more complex setup. For example, you can have something like this, in which you configure a lot of host group and all those host groups are accessible through the same proxy. So um, it's actually very interesting because you can have two host groups that are the one that connect your application to the main database. And again, you can split the main database system in writes and slaves, so you have host group 0 and 1. Then you can have a host group just for run reporting query. So the reporting query are not running on the same servers that are facing a user. Or you can have um, other host group in which you have uh, that are connected to the data warehousing uh, database system. Or you can have a host group connect the proxy to some server that is in a completely different site. What is very important uh, in this example is that you have two different host groups in which you can do writes. And so you are um, the paradigm of having a group, uh, a host group for insert for DMS statement and another host group for set statement, it doesn't work anymore here. So we need a more uh, complex setup. This setup can be way more complex than a simple read file script. And for this reason, some important decision has to be made about the, the architecture of Proxy SQL. So Proxy SQL, as we said previously, uh, organized all this backend in uh, functionality groups. And those functionality groups might not have any relationship between them. For example, the, the data warehouse might be not connect to the main database system, so there might be no replication between the two. So for this reason, proxy SQL is not replication aware by default. So proxy SQL is never checking if there is any replication and if the replication is healthy. Because more probably there is no replication relationship between the various host group. And another important thing to know is that when you uh, execute a query and the query goes on proxy SQL, it's always rooted to a specific host group. This means that you cannot uh, join data between two different host groups. So this is a basic design of how to use proxy SQL. So you have the application from one side and the host group from the other side, and proxy SQL is in the middle. Of course, you can extend this one, this basic stuff, and be more host loop. And of course, each host loop might have an arbitrary number of servers. And, and so on, you can add more and more host loop. <coughs> and you can extend this one, and having a proxy set between the application and host loop, but you can add more application servers that connect to the same, to the same proxy. Before explaining uh, in the days how Proxy SQL does this, um, I, have, I have to explain uh, what are the internal of Proxy SQL. Proxy SQL it has a configurable number of threads, and each of these threads is responsible to manage a certain, a certain uh, amount of connection between the application and the backends. 
It also has a query processor and a query cache. And the next slide I'm going to explain what, what, is the, what they do. Uh, the query processor is once a thread get, uh, is, is handling a connection between the application and the host group, um, it queries the query processor to understand what to do with this specific request from the application. So it can rewrite the query if, it is, if you are defining a rule that this query needs to be rewritten, the query processor does this. And also define what type of query need to be cached and what not. And it also defines what is the, the target for this specific query. So you can specify that query X must go to host to zero while another sort of query needs to go to host to one. The query cache. The query cache instead is it's caching the queries while they are um, while they are being executed. So on the wire while the queries are passing, it's understanding if the query needs to be cached or not. It, right now, it uses an internal key value storage, and it is in memory only. This means it is very fast. And right now, the only way to specify which query needs to be cached is based on a pattern. So you specify what is the regular expression that match a specific query, and if the query match one of the regular expressions that you have specified, um, the query is being cached. Once the query is cached, it is expired only by the mouth. So if you specify that a query needs to be cached for three seconds, after three seconds this query is removed from, from the cache. In the roadmap, we are going to extend the criteria for which queries can be, can be expired. Uh, one of the way probably is if, the, if process QL identifies some specific insert statement or other DMI statement that might validate uh, one of the results that it, it invalidated or it can trigger, you know, it might have some trigger that, that cause the removing of the of the cache from, from the cache, of, of, of the result set from the cache. And also we're going to have a distributed caching. These are some uh, better benchmarks running proxy SQL. I uh, run SysBench using a relatively small table, only 100 k rows, and execute this on a four core server. As you can see, I run MySQL with query uh, cache, without query cache, and with proxy SQL. And the work, the, the benchmark is a read only work, but um, it's a read only benchmark, so there is no invalidation of the query cache. Although the performance of the query cache is very low, while with proxy SQL the performance goes very high. So it overcomes the limitation of the, of the query cache. That actually become a bottleneck, one stage for four thread. Query writes, again, the reprise is done on the wire, so while the queries are, being, are passing through the proxy, they are being analyzed and eventually repeated. It uses a simple uh, re regular expression, match and replace. So if a query match a specific pattern, is being repeated. And once it's repeated, it is optionally cached. So you might also have queries that are not, uh, that are not cached, just repeated. And here is an example of how rewriting the queries can improve performance. There are more details on, on this link. Basically, the performance of um, uh, the performance of this specific workload with MySQL were quite low. With proxy SQL having just the caching enabled was roughly double than the performance with, uh, with MySQL. But once the, uh, the query of rights was enabled and the same query were, were being rewritten in a different way, performance were very high. So explaining more about the component within proxy SQL, we have also a new certification module and a connection pooling. Let us explain what those does. The connection pooling is, well, as for the connection pooling, we try to minimize the overhead associated with the creation of new, of new connections. So when connections are not used anymore by uh, client connection, they are being stored in the connection pool and used for other client connections. The user authentication, uh, what it does is authenticate the client with proxy SQL instead of authenticating the client to the MySQL server. 
In this way, the client can always connect to ProxySQL even if there is no backend. The reason is that uh, <coughs> there are two reasons for this. One of the reasons is that you might get data from the cache without having MySQL server, so you can just put data from there. And the fact that one client connection can generate multiple uh, connections in the background. And with this uh, proxy you need to have um, the credential to connect to the virus, the virus backend. It's also allowed two more features that are still unstable. One is the other connect. This means that um, proxy SQL reconnect uh, to a backend in case this backend is, is gone or the, or the connection to the backend is terminated. And the client will never get an error. So the client is automatically reconnected without noticing it. And it's also allowed a uh, failover. And the last important component is the admin interface. So what is exactly the admin interface is is a module running inside proxy SQL that is possible to access through any MySQL client, so a MySQL monitor or any uh, or any application that speaks the MySQL protocol, and it's allowed to uh, configure proxy SQL at the runtime, so you can specify what to cache, what not to cache, and so on. And it also exports some internal statuses, so from there you can understand. Uh, how things are running inside Proxy SQL. This is very important because it allows you to reconfigure Proxy SQL without restarting it, um, so you can change it this behavior to run fine. And the fact that uh, if you use the MySQL protocol, you can use an application to change this behavior. This is an example of um, through the admin interface, you can create some tables because speaking the MySQL protocol, this is how some data is stored within Proxy SQL. And <coughs> basically here, we are creating what are the caching tools that are defined in Proxy SQL. So this means, the first line basically means whatever does not match select, so all the DML statements are sent to host group ID 0, and they are not cached. TTL minus 1 means don't cache it. And instead, all the set for updates, also those ones are sent to host group 0, and they are not cached. While everything else, that means all the select statement, are sent to host group uh, 1, and they are cached for 30 seconds. This is a very uh, simple example. And this is instead of an example of how inside of SQL you have, uh, re uh, you have uh, regular inspection to have a match and a replace. So all the set statements that match this regular expression are being repeated uh, with this other select statement. And after the rewrites, the result set is also cached for 37, if the is 30. So we said that proxy SQL sits between the application and the MySQL server, but where is that be? Where is the best place to uh, deploy proxy SQL? Well, uh, we try to follow the 80-20 rules that is a lot used in networking that says that 20% of the that 80% of the traffic should be local, while 20% of the traffic should not should be not local. So applying this principle, the best thing to do is to have proxy SQL as close as possible to the application. And in fact, what you can do is just to move proxy SQL in a the application server. So having the application proxy SQL running on the same host. Having the application proxy SQL in the same host, you can also, instead of using TCP IP, you, you can use Unix domain socket. Um, so the, the latency between the application and proxy SQL is so low that having proxy SQL, it does not add any almost no latency between the communication that there is between the application and the virus host group. It minimizes the latency a lot. So having this principle and having proxy SQL inside the application server, it's allow a very basic high ability because you can just deploy more server and each server has used the same stuff. You have the application proxy SQL on the same server. So what happened here is that if one of those servers goes goes down for whatever reason, you're losing both application and proxy SQL. So proxy SQL on the other server will continue working with absolutely no problem because they are active that are completely detached from the proxy SQL that, that went down. 
But you can uh, extend this even more. For example, you can have a proxy SQL sit in between uh, the application server with the own proxy SQL and the body source loop with my SQL installed. So in this case, what you do is you connect all the application server, all the proxy SQL and the application server to the proxy SQL that you put in the middle, and this one connect to all the host loop that are in the backend. Well, of course, here there is one of the problems is that proxy SQL here becomes a single point of failure. But actually, it is not because, as we said previously, proxy SQL considers any backend as a host loop. So actually, if this box SQL that is there, it's not just a single instance, but you should consider it as a host loop. So you have actually that all the box SQL in the application are connecting to a host loop. A host loop is the backend, and this host loop is connecting to the various host loop uh, where my SQL is actually running. So how to achieve high reliability here? Well, it's very easy. You just put another box SQL in the same host loop. And in this way, all the proxy SQLs are running in the application server will connect to one of the two, and as soon as one of the proxy SQL goes down, they will redirect all the traffic to the other. What is important is that you need to configure both of them in the same host group. And you just specify that all the traffic that goes proxy SQL to be forwarded to this host group. And well, you can create something crazy like this. Because they are all speaking in the MySQL protocol, you can create cascade um, a multi layer stack in which you have process QL connecting process QL, and each of them you can have different tooling. So you can specify a query what is the path for a specific query. And if you think about the setup, there's nothing different than what you normally have when you have a system with this caching data. For example, when you are browsing a site, you have some caching system on your browser. Then if you are on a campus or a university proxy, probably you have some proxy that is running on the campus, and then the discussion, the discussion data, and then you connect to the site, and those to the site have some internet caching as well. So let's try to summarize this one. And what you have about location is that you should follow the 8020 rule. So put the proxy SQL as close as possible to the application. <coughs> and consider SQL caching as other caching, like caching for HTTP, FTP, and DNS. Using those principles, uh, it is very easy to achieve high ability. So don't forget to use a host group and to put more proxy SQL in the same host group. And you can have multi-layer of caching. So you can have caching uh, on the first level of proxy SQL and something else cached on, on a different level. And again, you can have sharding because you specify which query you need to be cached where. So uh, through the admin interface, you can also reconfigure the host loop. Uh, this is a very powerful tool because I assume that you want to remove a host so what you do is, when this happens, is that all the connection to, to the server that has gone, is gone, whether because it's dead or because you reconfigure from that main interface of the server, it's not there anymore. All the connection to server 2 are terminated. And what you can do is, you can move the same server that is in cost group 1 to, sorry, in cost group 0 to cost group 1. And so all the, all the new connections that are assigned to host group 1 can also use server 1. Um, one thing to notice here is that you don't need to have a one-to-one -one relationship between a server and a host group. You can have the same server in two different host groups. Nothing stops you to do this. So if, uh, for example, server 1 is a master, you can also send reads to it if you put it on host group 1 as well. What about failover? Okay. Failover is a two-phase process in which you remove a host and then you add a host in a different in the same host group. It's still experimental, looks like working, but I still need to test a bit more. So uh, let's go back to the simple setup where you have the application for SQL and two host group. And assume that the first one, the host group zero, is where you have the master, while host group one is where you have all the slides. <laughs> And you want to do a failover, can't failover. So what you do is you remove this server for host group zero, 
And what happened is that all the connections to the arts post assigned to host group, they are put on hold. So the application can continue send the entire statement like insert or updates, but those statements get stuck in proxy SQL until you add another server on the same host group. So the application won't notice that the server is gone. It will just have some latency in, uh, in the response. So the next step is you take one server from host group one and you move it upstairs in host group zero. So when you, as soon as you do this, Proxy SQL automatically sends the queries that were stuck inside Proxy SQL uh, to host group to host group two. So the application will start writing again on the database server. What is important to note is that if the, during the meantime while you are doing this failover, if the application was sending select statement, the select statement were still going to host group one without uh, being affected by this failover. Uh, in this in this stuff, I had just one proxy SQL, but actually you can have multiple proxy SQL being set up, and in this case you have a distributed failover. Uh, distributed failover is when you have multiple applications, each of them running their own proxy SQL, or you have uh, all the connections connected to a certain number of proxy SQL. Um, to do a distributed failover, you need a manager that instructs all the all the proxy SQL to remove the host and then to add a new host in the, in the host group that was, where it was the master. Proxy SQL does not have any tools to do this, but you can use any tools that speak to MySQL protocol and is able to send queries to, to, to do this. For example, you can, use, so, uh, you can use MHA with the pre and post script. Let's make an example. So I see that you have this very simple stuff where you have two application servers, two proxy SQL, and two host group. Host group zero where you have the master, and host group one where you have all the slaves. Server one dies for whatever reason. MHA detects this. And as soon as you detect that, host, that the only server in host group zero died, MHA will send a command to the various uh, proxy SQL saying that the server has gone so to remove the server from host group zero. So the two proxy SQL will stop sending query to host group zero. Then what HA will do is moving one server from host group one to host group zero. So what is doing here is actually promoting the server, making it the master. After doing this, Proxy SQL will send another command to the body, sorry, MHA will send a command to the proxy SQL saying that now there is a server in the host group zero, so they can continue sending the MHA statement. As soon as the command is received by proxy SQL, proxy SQL will start sending a DMA statement to host zero. So what happened here is a distributed failover. So the proxy SQL are important that the failover happened. Yes, I'm finished, that's good. And so the code is, is, is on GitHub, just download it, and there are some tutorials uh, on, uh, on this website, on proxyscale.com, pretty quick, try it, and I will keep that.